Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Prepare for trouble and make it double, as we're taking a look at a red-black control deck featuring double vision, the 5-mana enchantment, saying whenever we cast our first instant or sorcery spell each turn, copy that spell and we may choose new targets for the copy. And you're not seeing double, we are indeed playing mostly 2-offs in this deck, so there's no shortage of various instants and sorceries we can copy with double vision. And one way we can leverage the 5 mana rare enchantment is by playing an instant in the opponent's turn. Because double vision only copies the first spell we play each turn, we want to be able to play one in our turn and one in the opponent's turn to get the most mileage out of our enchantment. So let's take a look at the entire deck list here, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got two copies of Blood Chief's Thirst as a cheap removal spell, can also kick it to take care of larger creatures and potentially Planeswalkers as well. We've got Cling to Dust as a bit of Graveyard Hate that can also gain a bit of life back. We've got two copies of Duress as a cheap discard spell for non-creature spells. We've got Spikefield Hazard, can play it as a land or deal one damage, potentially exiling the creature as well. Then at two mana we've got more discard with Agonizing Remorse. We've got two copies of Heartless, act as instant speed removal. Fire Prophecy can deal 3 damage and potentially let us put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library if we have some more situational cards in hand, or maybe in the late game the opponent's empty-handed and we want to get rid of some discard spells. We've got two copies of Shredded Sails, giving us answers to artifacts in the main deck and can always cycle it or maybe take out a flying creature. Thrill of Possibility is also an excellent one to copy with double vision, as we have to discard one card and then we get to draw four, and once again we can get rid of a more situational card. We've got two copies of Mace Mind Tome as another card draw engine that can help us scry and just draw cards in the late game. Two copies of Shatter Skull Smashing can play it as a land or as a removal spell in the late game. Then Valakut Awakening we can also play as a land or we can cast it to refresh our hand and it's also pretty nice to be able to copy it with double vision as we potentially get to refresh our hand multiple times until we find the perfect set of cards to work with. Two copies of Palanca Predation as a more discard that can also be played as a land. Then at four mana two copies of Extinction Event which is quite nice with a double vision in play since we can name odd with the first copy and even with the second copy of Extinction Event essentially wiping the entire board. Two copies of Hangar Mauling, which can also be played as a land or as a 4 mana instant to destroy target creature. Two copies of Storm's Wrath, which deals 4 damage to each creature and each planeswalker. And then finally our 4 copies of Double Vision. Now you might be wondering how we actually win the game, and that's where the 4 copies of Crawling Barons come in handy. We can first make sure that the opponent doesn't have any instant speed removal in hand with our various discard spells, and then we can eventually attack the opponent with a giant Crawling Barons, and we can always sink our extra mana into putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, even if we don't want to turn it into a creature. And then the rest of the mana base, we've got 4 Temple of Malice, 6 Mountains, 6 Swamps, 2 copies of Fabled Passage, which can fetch up our basics, and then we've seen plenty of dual-faced cards that we can play as lands as well. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, with uh, fine opening hands. Plenty of interaction, thrill to maybe go digging for double vision. Facing a Temple of Triumph. Ooh, Maze Mind Tomb could be great. We'll get this tap land out of the way. Don't really mind drawing an extra land here. A Robber of the Rich. I'm gonna exile my lands. So, that's definitely a candidate for my Heartless Act. A Luminarch Aspirant, I see, so this must be a red-white party deck. So we'll wait for the trigger, and then in response to the trigger we have to kill the robber before it gets a counter. Can have a look with Palaka Predation. And oof, those are two card types we're not very good at interacting with, both the Merriment and the Retreat. But I can only take one of them. So what's worse? I'm guessing the Merriment, because at least with Retreat they need lands to get value out of it. Seasoned Hallowblade's also kind of a problem. 
but we do have extinction event to eventually exile it. So for now, probably go with uh, Maze Mind Tome draw card. And then I can Storm's Wrath next turn. I'll take three. Sadly, I don't have triple reds, so I can't wrath, have them discard, and in response hazard the Hallow Blade, which would be a pretty nice play otherwise. But I guess we'll just wrath and then uh, probably play Awakening Tapped. Tossery, Beacon of Unity. Yeah, that's a uh, pretty good one. So at least I can kill the Hallow Blade now. Do I want to scry? Wouldn't mind finding a double vision or an extinction event. All right, so we'll be able to deal with the opponent's board. And then I'll play out my lands. Opponent makes a token, that's not too bad. I'll wait to draw with the tome instead of scrying. So let's draw. Ooh, there's a double vision. So it feels like we're in great shape now. End of turn, I can decide to just put two counters on the Crawling Barons. Take two. Ooh, Amber Cleave. Alright, I guess we'll Fire Prophecy then. I'm gonna get double vision in play. And then I can thrill away the duress if my opponent's empty-handed. Another Hello Blade. All right, so we can start with thrill, discarding, duress. And then in the points upkeep, I can double Spike Field Hazard the Hello Blade. Before they draw a card, they can discard. And feels like we're taking over now. Can start putting counters on Crawling Barons to end the game. Could go for a main phase awakening. And then I kind of like all my cards here. Maybe get rid of a smashing. And then I guess we'll just thirst a token. 
hit my land drop. And then I can just draw with a 2 man of turn. Could also Shredded Sails the Umber Cleave now. Back up Crawling Barons. So how about main phase awakening once again? Can discard Predation. And smashing. And then I'm probably just gonna shred it sails the Ember Cleave. And can maybe ambush the Archpriest. Now Fire Prophecy killing both creatures seems better. And get rid of the rest. And then I'll keep leveling up the biggest crawling barons. And my opponent explodes. Yeah, we just kind of depleted all the opponent's resources and managed to take over the game thanks to double vision, providing a ton of card advantage. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn to Tomb, Hagra mauling as removal, although we do need double black still, so I probably need to bottom the mountain. And then double vision to hopefully pull ahead. So we can probably use the Tomb to scry towards a second black source. Innkeeper, I guess I don't mind using the Shadow Skull Smashing. So yeah, I just want to hit my land drops. Thirst could also work on the Innkeeper. Yeah, maybe that's better, and then we can just draw with the Maze Mind Tome instead. Second Innkeeper, followed by a Swordmaster. So now if I draw land, I can smash him for two and kill both creatures. So we'll draw. And then scry towards an untapped land. Hmm. Bottom. Alright, a few too many tap lands here. Do I just smash the Innkeeper then? Yeah, I guess that's probably safest. And then, do I want a Fable Passage? I guess I don't mind. It let's me play Double Vision next turn. Third Innkeeper. Okay. And a Falmar Knight to draw a card right away. So I probably just get my own card draw engine in play before dealing with the innkeeper. And then if we can find a sweeper, that would be nice. Opponent does nothing. Fire Prophecy, also not a bad one. 
So we've got some options. Could fire prophecy, maybe getting rid of a mauling, and then still potentially play to him draw a card if we find an untapped lands. Shredded sails could be a nice answer to the Great Henge, so I don't really want to get rid of it. Might be greedy to get rid of my only removal spell. And then I can scry with Tome to maybe find some more card draw engines like uh, Thrill of Possibility or Valakut Awakening. Crawling Barons probably don't need a second one right away. So I could draw. Probably not activating the Crawling Barons. And pass a turn. So if they play another creature, Hagra Mauling can kill both. Kind of expect them to have a great henge in hand at this point. Is this the last innkeeper? It is. So as soon as I get priority, I can kill it. Um, yeah, if I let the Murder Strider resolve, I could kill Murder Strider and Innkeeper instead of Innkeeper and Falmar Knight. But then we potentially give them the opportunity to play another adventure creature. Although for double green, there's not that many adventure creatures I can think of. And they've already played a land, I believe. So I guess we'll let that resolve. And then now we'll kill Innkeeper and Murder Strider. Falmar Knight is more annoying when uh, we want to attack with Crawling Barons, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Heartless Act's great too. So yeah, I guess we'll double vision again. And now we have triple vision. They could technically start using Castle Lochthwain, but... They have a few too many cards in hand for that to be profitable. I guess I can scry before we draw with Tome. Probably don't need a third double vision. Alright. Yeah, we'll pass a turn. Best case scenario, they play another creature pre-combat, but I don't think that's happening. Now with Heartless Act, the copies will choose the same mode as the original Heartless Act. With Extinction Event it's different, because it happens upon resolution, so you can still choose odd with one and even with the other. Hardcast Murder Strider, opponent was holding on to all these removal spells that they don't have a target for. So that's why we want to find a discard spell before we start attacking with Crawling Barons. So Hazard can kill the Rider by itself, if we want to. I'll probably start sandbagging lands now, in case we find Valakut Awakening. Order of Midnight gets back Innkeeper. So they'll play Innkeeper and Order. So now I have to decide if I want to Hazard the Innkeeper, or wait for the order to resolve so we can exile the order as well. And potentially let them draw an extra card. Mm -hmm. 
And then I'll just take two. Can only activate my crawling barons once, so not enough to ambush the murder strider. But we'll still put two counters on it. Alright, we're starting to get to the point where we want to consider cycling shredded sails, but I'm still concerned about a potential Great Henge. So, yeah, I think, let's see, four, four, I can activate Crawling Barons twice. Another order for Innkeeper. Yeah, Valakut Awakening, Thrill of Possibility. As soon as we find one of those, we should be able to take over the game. Rider attacks with four mana up, so they probably have another Murderous Rider in hand, is my guess. rest can have a look. I don't expect them to have a ton of non-creature spells in hand, but I guess it's probably fine to fire it off here. Because of course Murder Strider is still a creature in the opponent's hand, so we can't take that away. Alright, they had an extinction event, and then as we expected, another Murder Strider. So now, do I cycle Shredded Sails? Yeah, I guess I do. Cling to Dusk and draw some cards. So we'll fire that off in the opponent's turn. Alright, so don't hate my spots. And then maybe I want to level up the other Crawling Barons. But we'll see. Maybe I wanted to cling to dust before the opponent's innkeeper trigger resolved. Maybe I should do it now in case we find removal for innkeeper. So I want to exile a non-creature spell. There's Valakut Awakening to draw us a ton of cards. And Extinction Event can wipe the board. Alright, so we should be fine here. So we'll just take two. They still have a murder strider in hand to kill my crawling barons. Cling to Dusk can also gain us a ton of life back. So I'm not too concerned about uh, getting low. So we'll start with extinction events. Fine to tap the crawling barons now. Alright, and then we'll play out some lanes and pass a turn. Alright, there's the Great Henge at long last. And then end of turn, probably Awakening. I don't need to hold on to cling to dust since there's one in the graveyard too. 
but I guess it's okay to keep one in hand. It's essentially Ancestral Recall here, one mana to draw three. And then... I guess we'll get rid of Predation. I mean, at this point, maybe Predation's just better than Remorse, so I don't take the one damage each time. And then... We can hang on to the Smashing. And Shredded Sails can kill Great Henge. We've got 29 cards remaining, so not too concerned of decking yet. Alright, so Predation I don't necessarily need to double. So I could cast something else first, like this Cling to Dust. Probably have enough cards in hand now where I just want to exile the innkeepers to gain a bit of life back. And then now we can cast Predation. It's not going to get doubled, but I probably only need to get rid of the Murder Strider. Extinction event doesn't matter. And yeah, we can probably start attacking now. So once our deck takes control of the game, it doesn't easily let go. Beanstalk Giant we can Heartless Act, but can Awakening first, or maybe Thrill. the rest to have a look. I guess it makes it easier for the opponent to activate Castle Lockthwain, so I maybe didn't even want to cast it the rest, but that's okay. Heartless Act kills Beanstalk. And Crawling Barons gets in. Twenty cards remaining, opponents one attack away from dead here. So we can double vision, hazard deals with Falmar Knight and deals three more to the opponent, and Crawling Barons gets in for lethal. So yeah, we managed to outgrind the Black Green Adventure deck, even after they drew all four Innkeepers and got them back from the graveyard multiple times. So the deck definitely has some nice staying power and even has main deck answers to the Great Henge, which is always nice. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice hand featuring double double vision. Probably gonna have to play Mauling as a land here. I guess I can play the Awakening first. Opponent on blue-whites. Opponent is playing Jory Disruption, and they are indeed going to disruption my tomb, sadly. Don't think I'll need Mauling. Opponent on Esper. Awakening I probably want to hang on to until after double vision. And now we can just level up our Crawling Barons. If they want to counter vision, that's fine. We've got another one. Resolves instantly. So 
So if my opponent's playing Dream Trawler, a doubled Storm's Wrath can get rid of it, and so can Extinction Event. Another win condition could be Ashiok, which we can also deal with. So, yeah, don't hate my spots. I guess we'll double vision again. And then next turn, get a triple Valakut Awakening. Probably get rid of Heartless Act. I guess we gotta watch out for a potential Onduin version. Realm Cloak Giant's fine. So let's Awakening. I guess now I kinda wanna keep the Heartless Act. So I think we can get rid of Extinction Event then. Storm's Wrath is a bit better against Planeswalkers. Temple and Hazard can go. Ooh, Predation. Definitely want to triple Predation next turn. And Remorse is also pretty good here. Yeah, let's just uh, kill the Giants. And pass it back. Not hitting my land drop here is not ideal since we typically want to keep hitting our land drops turn after turn. But my hand is all action, so I think we'll be fine. And then maybe Remorse tripled instead of Predation. Massacre Worm, Seagate Restoration, and Shatter the Sky. Don't actually need to take Shadow of the Sky, but might as well. And my opponent concedes. Well, we managed to uh, quickly take over the game here against Esper Control. Yeah, sometimes Esper can have some answers to double vision. Elspeth Conquers Death is kind of the main one I'm scared of when facing a more controlling white deck. So that's definitely one you want to keep in mind. And if you expect it, it could be correct to hold double vision until you can find a discard spell first to get rid of the Conqueror's Death and then play it out. So there's definitely some nuances when it comes to these control matchups. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Some creature interaction. Mana base is good. And a turn one I'll say I probably end up killing with the Spikefield Hazard, but we'll wait and see what they play on turn two. Luminarch Aspirant. All right, let me go full control. And then we want to kill the Aspirant before they get a chance to put a counter somewhere. So this is probably the Mono White deck. For now, we'll probably end up cycling Shred Sails. Don't think there's too many artifacts outside of maybe Glass Casket, which we don't care about. And the Mono White deck. They do have some flying creatures, Legion Angel comes to mind, but it's only a one-off in the deck with three in the sideboard. So I don't think we need to hang on to Shredded Sails for that. And then now... Probably just cast Awakening, getting rid of Shredded Sails and a couple lands. Take three. Speaker's fine. So they can use Alsei to save one of their creatures here. So I could decide to Extinction Event on Odd, get rid of Speaker and Alsei. I could have a look with Palaka Predation, but then we're getting scarily close to the Speaker of the Heavens making Angel tokens, so... I think I will just Extinction Event on Odd here. Mm -hmm. 
reason to maybe hang on to Extinction Event is that it could exile Heliot if Heliot's an active creature. Apparition just played as a 2 2. Luckily, Apparition can't exile our double vision, which is pretty important too in today's metagame. And yeah, Storm's Wrath looks okay, but I kind of want to have a look with Predation first. Make sure they don't have like a Legion Angel I need to get rid of. And there's a Legion Angel. So that was pretty key, otherwise, they would have had a steady stream of 4 3 flyers. And then don't really feel the need to Heartless Act when we can Storm's Wrath. So we managed to dismantle the Mono White tech here. Might see a concession after Storm's Wrath resolves. Opponent gains a bit of life back. Another apparition, not very impressive here. Um, don't really need to heartless act. Glass caskets could potentially exile my crawling barons, I guess, if I activate it to block apparition. Another Daxos. Yeah, I guess we'll Heartless Act in response. That way they don't gain life when their creature dies from Daxos. Remorse. I guess can get rid of Casket so we can block with uh, Crawling Barons. And then we just want to find a bit of card draw. Double Vision, Maze Mind Tome. But yeah, our opponent has seen enough. So yeah, the Mono White deck, also pretty popular deck in Best of One. Not very well positioned against what we're doing, as we saw there. Skyclave Apparition looks pretty ridiculous as a 3-mana 2-2 that doesn't do anything else. Maze Mind Tome is kind of the only target we have for it. And we only have two copies, so... Yeah, this uh, Black Red Double Vision deck... Definitely a bit better positioned in best of one where people can't adjust to sideboard against or a creatureless approach. But having a 5-man enchantment, there's not too many answers that people play in the main deck to a 5-man enchantment since Apparition doesn't get rid of it. Of course, there's Elspeth Conqueror's Death, there's Ugin the Spirit Dragon, although that one we can hope to take away with one of our many discard spells. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.